Today I want to talk about the bow hold. The bow hold for adult learners, I think, is probably the most difficult initial hurdle to overcome. It's uncomfortable and sometimes it's even painful. Um, so let's dive into establishing a great bow hold. Before we dive right in, let's do a caveat, which is you know, if you look at the human hand, there's tons of different hand shapes and sizes, and therefore there are tons of different ways to hold the bow. I have my opinion, which is what you're going to get today, but I could show you 10 different soloists um, who hold the bow in strikingly different ways, and they all sound great. So I'm going to give you some principles today, but it's on you to experiment and find what works best for you. And for you perfectionists out there, Learning to hold the bow and use the bow, that's a lifelong thing. I'm still working on it. I, you know, top pros will talk about how they've made subtle changes. So it's a journey and just enjoy yourself. Let's start with an overview of the fingers and the thumb in the use of the bow and kind of what their roles are. The first finger, our index finger, is the primary uh, force we use to transfer weight from the arm and from the back muscles. So it's basically the finger that, you know, sinks into the string and creates the most tone. The second finger is sort of a helper finger. And the thing to know about the second finger in terms of the bow hold is that for me, I place it on the ferrule, which is this little piece of metal at the bottom of the frog. The first finger is going to drape over uh, the thumb leather I mean, what you're probably seeing here is rubber because I have a rubber guard on my bow, but under that rubber guard is a small piece of leather. That's where the first finger goes. Second finger goes on the ferrule, third finger, and fourth finger, in my opinion, drape over the bow comfortably. I've seen some people talk about putting your fourth finger, the tip of it, right on the eye of the frog, which is this decorative uh, circle in the middle of the frog. I don't uh, advise that. I think people's hands are all different shapes, and so it's not necessary. The, for me, the biggest thing are these two fingers, their placement, and then three and four just sort of drape. So let's talk about the thumb. This is treacherous waters for beginner cellists. Um, and uh, here's what I do. I, the corner of my thumb where the skin meets the nail. Uh, if you ever played that game Tetris um, on a Nintendo or on a computer, what I do is I hook like a Tetris piece, I bend my thumb, and then I just rest it in this little corner where the frog meets the stick of the, of the bow. So it's kind of like this corner the corner of my thumb goes into this corner and I line those two up and I line it up with a bent thumb so my thumb is not locked out pushing into the bow it's just bent one more quick thing about the roll of the fingers the way I see it the thumb sort of creates a fulcrum and so if you put more weight into the back two fingers, we do that often when we want to lighten up the sound. So we use our back two fingers more when we want to take weight out of the bow. And if the, when we want a more powerful sound, we I personally pour more of my weight into my front two fingers and make these way less active. So that's kind of how I see it, is these are drivers and then these are kind of like a braking system so so that you can adjust how much weight is sinking into the string. So that's what the fingers are doing. With the thumb, as I already said, I see it as a fulcrum. And then it's also, the way I see the thumb is kind of like the shock absorbers on a car. So as you're navigating the train of the strings and you're crossing strings and you're moving out towards the tip and your hand is doing various things to accomplish all this, the thumb, especially the flexible thumb, allows you to sort of navigate these string crossings 
and keep the wheels or the hair on the road or the string. A final thing about you know the roll of the fingers, my biggest warning or uh, caution would be to try to develop a bow grip that has flexible supple fingers but doesn't allow your fingers to sort of swish around while you're playing. Again, I could probably name a couple soloists, top, top cellists, who do that. So maybe it'll work for you. But in general, this is um, inefficient, I find. And I find it also kind of throws the balance off if your fingers are moving around too much. So what I try to do is have very flexible fingers, but I imagine almost like a drop of glue is on each tip of my finger. And so the fingers are, the fingertips are sort of stuck where they are, but everything else is nice and, and loose. So try not to let this start happening while you bow. We just talked about the roll of the fingers and the thumb in the bow grip. Now I'm gonna tell you uh, an exercise I developed that will help you establish that bow grip. I had a lot of trouble with that when I was uh, starting out, I would kind of get the fingers somewhat right, but I could never get my thumb quite right. So here's what I came up with. What I do is I rest my entire forearm on my leg. And then I put the button, this metal part of the bow, I rest that on my knee so the bow is vertical. And my forearm's resting on my leg. And then I just gently wrap my fingers around in about where I think they should be. And what I found is when I add the thumb, because of the way my forearm lands on my leg and the angle and everything, the thumb just fits great. It's, it, it meets that point we talked about on the stick and the frog, and the thumb is already bent. And then so I just take it, I lift it up, boom, I got it. And now you can put it on the cello and start playing. Every student who I've shown this trick to about resting on the leg and adding the thumb, it's always worked out great, so I really think you should try it. Um, I've never had a weird thing yet where they, the thumb comes in some strange, horrific looking angle or anything. So give it a shot. Now I wanna talk about a really important issue, not a fun issue, but an important one. And that's when we feel pain when we're playing cello in the, in the bow hand. I'd say 99% of the pain that people have told me about or that you hear about is this area right here. What is this area on our hand? That's the muscle of the thumb. And what happens is as uh, we're developing comfort with our bow grip and we're not quite there yet, we're not quite comfortable, we end up straightening our thumb out usually or even with a bent thumb, we end up just pushing into the stick and sort of clamping on the stick in a rigid way. And this muscle is not equipped to deal with that. And so it just sort of burns out and eventually it can cause almost like a chronic sense of pain. So that's what that's from. If you think about the way our hands are designed and how we use our hands in everyday use, you grab a cup, you know, you, you turn a doorknob, you pick up something, we, we have this kind of clamping mechanism built into our physiology, which is super effective for all of these things we do. Unfortunately, that gets activated sometimes when we play with the bow. And that, I think, is something we have to stay away from. It's kind of unnatural, but you don't want to feel the fingers pulling into the stick of the bow and the thumb pushing into the stick of the bow. That's just wasted energy, and it also can end up causing pain um, from muscles that are just overtaxed. Another thing I want to mention on this topic of pain is something I haven't seen anyone else talk about, but I think it's true. When we talk about this clamping mechanism, people focus on the thumb, like, I gotta stop pushing with the thumb. But you know, what? one thing that can happen is if your four fingers are pulling into the bow too much, that will naturally tell the thumb to start pushing as well because it's a, you know, it's like we said, it's a shock absorbers, it's a fulcrum, it's a balance, it's a counterbalance to your fingers. So 
everyone fixates on the thumb not pushing in, but you also have to remember that you don't want really like a really tight death grip on either side with the thumb or the fingers because the fingers, if they start over engaging the stick of the bow, that's going to cause the thumb to start pushing in as well. The big takeaway here is that the fingers and the thumb need to kind of have a harmonious relationship in the bow hold. And you don't want either one trying to dominate or and then both of them getting into sort of a, a stalemate where you're just squeezing the bow. So here's an exercise that could help with that. What I do is I take, uh, you know, just a, a regular at the frog on the D string. And then what I'll do is I'll just remove one finger at a time and just try to feel the sensation of the other fingers in the thumb with, without that one finger. So here's the middle finger off. Then I take the ring finger off. Take the pinky off. Take the first finger off. I think everyone will agree that's the weirdest one to mess with because that's uh, so critical in our you know sound production. What you're looking for there, um, first off, is to see if you can do it without tightening up, and then also just seeing how your thumb and your other fingers have to sort of recalibrate their positioning to make up for the finger that's not touching. It's a good way to kind of get a sense of what the finger's role is, each finger's role and the thumb's role, and then also check, oh, you know what? Look, when I took my ring finger off, everything tightened up. So maybe there's something to that. You want to explore the relationship of that finger because maybe that's sort of a weak spot in terms of where you're putting it or how you're using it. Now we're gonna uh, talk about a few exercises you can do to promote finger flexibility. So this is where we're at now is we figured out kind of how to hold the bow, what that means, what it looks like. We've started holding the bow and our fingers feel something kind of like cement blocks, you know, and it's everything's gripped up and it's when you talk about moving the fingers, you can't really even do that. So what do we do? We have a few exercises to kind of promote finger flexibility. This is a pencil. I like to take a pencil with this exercise because I think it, it helps. The focus is not on the cello currently, it's on the fingers. So we just kind of abstract it a little bit. And the idea is to take kind of a, a modified bow hold of the, of the pencil and then we want to lift and lower the pencil without dropping the pencil without other weird things happening. For this exercise, you want your pinky finger ideally on top of the pencil. So in a bow hold, it might be something like this, draped over the pencil. For this exercise, it works best if it's on top of the pencil. And that can be its own little mini exercise um, if you're not used to that. So what you'll notice the other major thing is that I'm not allowing my fingers to swish around like I talked about earlier. So yes, it's true that if I do something like this, this the pencil's moving up and down, but I don't think that helps as much for cello playing. So I'm keeping the grip as is, and then I'm lifting the fingers. So basically, this is kind of the motion we're talking about. And then the thumb is doing something sort of like that. And you put it all together and it looks like that. Harder than it looks. Give it a shot. Step two, same thing with the bow. So I take left hand holding the stick just so I don't drop the bow. And then I take my normal bow grip. I do the same little switch in the grip where I add the pinky on top. And then what I do is I kind of make a table with my forearm and my wrist. So my wrist is not bent either way. And 
I have my fingers draped and then this part of my finger, this between these knuckles right here, these parts are going to lift and join the tabletop. So that's kind of the goal there. So they're down and they join. Again, we don't we don't want it swishing. We don't want something where you bring the bow up by by just pulling it into your hand. If you see the my pinky is got it's coming down vertically and at the top it's also coming down vertically. Okay? So it's not this and it's it's you're not kind of sh put straightening your thumb and pushing it up this way. You're also not using your wrist. Yes, the bow is coming up and down, but my wrist is doing all the work. So this is about the fingers, remember. So we keep our tabletop and then we just boom, pull up. So it's this, it's again this and then the thumb is doing this. It is so hard to do at first. And it, I think it's just because we just don't use our fingers. I can't think of another activity where you're doing this kind of thing. So um, give it a shot. Last variation on the finger flexibility exercise is similar to the way we established our bow grip. That exercise is I put the forearm onto my leg. This time, however, my hand is not resting and the bow is not resting on my knee. So it's, it's draped over, the fingers are, are hanging in a bow grip with the pinky again on top, pinky on top of the stick. And then I pull up and the goal is to use your fingers and your thumb to pull the bow up so that the stick stays vertical. So we don't want to, it's, it's not about something where you do something like this. Yes, the stick's coming up, but it's your wrist is basically... So look at the tip of the bow. Make sure it's as vertical as possible. It looks decent to me. Um, and yeah, and so that's, that's one last way to kind of get used to sh using your fingers only to scoot the bow back and forth. If you get these three exercises down, I think just your general approach to making sound on the cello will, will greatly improve and so will your comfort playing cello. As a final little bit of advice, I want to cover something that kind of was a light bulb moment for me. Um, so I realized at some point that I kind of was playing, I, I would bow back and forth, but my my grip felt pretty much the same whether I was at the frog, in the middle, or at the tip. And so I, once I adjusted that, things really started working for me a lot better. Um, so what I mean by that is if I play at the frog, for example, I can sort of just sink my hand. I feel like there's another hand, an invisible hand, sort of draped over my fingers like this, okay? And that's where I'm feeling the weight is sinking down. Okay? And as I pull, I just sort of scoot, scoot my arm and scoop out sound that way. When I get to the tip, I, my fingers don't really come off of the stick, but it feels like I'm doing this. So what I'm talking about is pronation. This is supination, when you turn your hand this way. This way is pronation. And what I'm doing is, I imagine a, like a heavy jug of milk or, or water. I'm pouring the weight of my hand onto my first finger. And that allows me, with my thumb, doing this, kind of turning the world's smallest doorknob. Okay? I do that pronate and use my thumb as well. And that creates extra torque, which allows me to play and grab the string with enough power. So when I actually am playing, my fingers won't leave the stick, but I feel they're, they're so, there's so little weight in them that I could just take them off like this. So if you think about what I'm trying to say here, at the frog I said I'm feeling basically a pretty even distribu distribution of weight on my hand. The fingers, 
the first finger is doing the work, but I, it feels kind of like this. Out here, it feels nothing like that. And each part of the bow is a slight adjustment. So if you find yourself struggling to play at the tip, you find yourself kind of your arm burning out if you're playing at the tip for a long time, that might be part of what's going on. You might have an overactive uh, third finger and fourth finger and they're, you know, they're holding on to the bow here and you should just ideally have all of that weight tipped into fingers one and two. I think that'll help uh, make bowing a lot more comfortable and a lot more effective. The use of the bow and the bow hold are such complex issues. Um, but this is my distilled guide for how to hold the bow and what to think about when you're using the bow first, especially as an adult beginner. I'll be making more videos about this subject and other subjects of cello playing uh, in the future. Uh, please subscribe and stay tuned and let me know if this was helpful in the comments. Thanks so much.